so it looks like we're gearing up for this election. Yeah. And uh, taking a deep dive into Kamala Harris's campaign. Yes. We've got kind of a mix of things here. Huh? Rally audio news coverage and some commentary, it seems like. You're yeah. really trying to gauge the energy surrounding her candidacy. Yeah. And the key issues she's focusing on. What's interesting is we've got a variety of voices. Yeah. Not just Harris and her supporters. Right. But also perspectives from uh -huh. people who are less enthusiastic about her campaign. Okay. Well, let's jump right in. One thing that struck me was. Yeah. This sense of disbelief at the rallies, right? Even among her strongest supporters, uh -huh. they seem to be genuinely puzzled, yeah, as to why the race is so close. You're picking up on a deliberate strategy here. Oh, Michelle Obama captured it perfectly, right? At a rally in Kalamazoo, Michigan, yeah, where she repeatedly asked, "Why on earth is this race even close?" It's not so much about genuine confusion, but more about framing the election as a stark choice. Between the obvious choice, Harris, exactly, and a less desirable alternative. By emphasizing the perceived qualifications and experience of Harris, right. they're subtly highlighting uh -huh. the perceived shortcomings of her opponent. It's a way to energize the base and create a sense of urgency. So it's less about convincing undecided voters. Right. And more about motivating Precise. those who are already leaning towards Harris. It's a get out the vote strategy disguised as bewilderment. Okay. Interesting tactic. And it's interesting how Michelle Obama plays on this further. Yeah. She talks about the overflow crowd at the Kalamazoo rally. Right. Emphasizing enthusiasm for Harris. Uh-huh. But then she pivots. She mentions how people seem willing to overlook what yeah. she calls the gross incompetence of the current administration right. while holding Harris to a much higher standard. That's a powerful way to frame things. Yeah. She's essentially saying, you're okay with this, right? but you're demanding perfection from her. Exactly. It taps into a sense of unfairness. It's about painting a picture of a double standard, Yeah. which can be a very effective way to rally support. Especially among those who already feel like the system is rigged against them. Absolutely. Yeah, this idea of Harris being held to a different standard seems to tie into uh, another thing. I noticed this portrayal of her okay. as the grown-up in the room. Okay. It's almost like they're saying, look, we've had enough of the chaos. Right. It's time for someone who's experienced, competent, and ready to lead. That's a very astute observation. Sure. The grown-up narrative is a deliberate attempt to tap into yeah. a desire for stability and competence, uh, especially after a period of perceived political turmoil. Okay. They're contrasting Harris's detailed policy plans right. with what they present as a lack of substance from the opposition. And they get pretty specific about those policy plans. Absolutely. Right. I'm thinking of things like her proposals yeah. for lowering drug prices mm -hmm. and offering tax breaks for working families. Michelle Obama uses very specific examples uh -huh. to highlight these policies. In one of the rally clips, she contrasts yeah. Harris's plan to lower drug prices by allowing Medicare to negotiate oh, wow. directly with pharmaceutical companies with the current administration's approach, right. which she characterizes as simply protecting the profits of big pharma. Interesting. It's a way to make the contrast feel more concrete right. and relatable to people's everyday lives. So they're trying to appeal to voters who are tired of the drama. Exactly. And looking for someone who can actually get things done. It's a classic appeal to competence and experience. But the question is, does this grown-up framing hmm. resonate with voters? Yeah. Does it come across as authentic? Right. Or does it feel like a calculated attempt to distance herself yeah. from the more emotional aspects of politics? Yeah. That's something for you to consider wow. as you weigh the different messages and strategies at play. And speaking of emotions, things get pretty intense uh -huh. when Michelle Obama starts talking about women's reproductive health. This is where the campaign really leans into emotional appeals, oh. Oh, particularly yeah. targeting women voters. They're not just talking about policy. Yeah. They're painting a vivid and frankly alarming picture right. of what life could look like uh -huh. under stricter abortion laws. Yes, it's not just about abstract rights right. or legal arguments. Yeah. She uses graphic language describing women being denied care uh -huh. during miscarriages, yeah. being turned away from hospitals, right. even facing life-threatening situations because of fear of legal repercussions. That's a deliberate choice. Wow. They're trying to break through the noise and make people feel right. the potential impact of these policies. Yeah on a very personal level. One of the most powerful moments is when Obama describes a woman hemorrhaging 
Oh, wow. After a miscarriage. Yeah. And being denied care because doctors are afraid of violating the law. Yeah. It's meant to be shocking and disturbing. It definitely stuck with me. She really drives home the point. Yeah. That this isn't just about politics. Right. It's about life and death. But she yeah. also directly addresses men mm. in these conversations, which I found interesting. Mm. It's like she's trying to shake them awake. Right. And make them understand the stakes, especially for the women in their lives. That's a brilliant strategy on multiple levels. Okay. First, it acknowledges that men are a crucial voting bloc. Uh -huh. Second, it appeals to their sense of responsibility and protection right. towards women in their lives. Okay. And third, it frames the election not just as a political contest, yeah. but a moral choice. She doesn't hold back either. In one of the audio clips, she directly challenges yeah. men who are considering voting for Trump or not voting at all. Right. Asking them, how do you justify turning your back on the women you love? Mm. How do you explain that to your daughters? It's a very right. direct and confrontational approach. Absolutely. And it raises an important question for you. Okay. How effective do you find this type of emotional appeal? Yeah. Does it motivate you or make you feel manipulated? Right. It's a delicate balance and it likely has a very different impact oh. on different people. It's a powerful tactic for sure. And it connects to something else we see in these sources. Okay. The campaign's attempts to frame their opponent's policies wow. in the most negative light possible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of us versus them rhetoric going on. Exactly. And it's particularly evident when it comes to their economic plans. Okay. Harris is focusing on affordability. Right. Promising to lower costs for working families. Yeah. We see this in her proposals for things like right. expanding the child tax credit. Right. And making child care more affordable. And she's directly contrasting her approach with the current administration's policies. Yes. She's painting a picture of an economy okay. that's rigged against working families. Right. Pointing to things like stagnant wages and rising health care costs as evidence. Huh. She even specifically mentions the proposed national sales tax, right. which she argues would disproportionately impact yeah. low and middle income families. So she's trying to position herself as the champion of the working class. Precisely. The one who will fight for everyday people right. who are struggling to make ends meet. And she's doing it by highlighting the ways uh, in which she believes her opponent's policies right. are making things harder for those yeah. who are already struggling. It's a classic populist appeal. Okay. And it can be very effective in mobilizing voters right. who feel like the system is rigged against them. It makes you wonder how much of this is about actual policy differences yeah. versus just trying to frame the other side in the worst possible light. That's a crucial question yeah. for you to consider right. as you evaluate these sources. Right. How much of what you're hearing is substantive policy debate uh -huh. versus political spin? It's hard to parse sometimes. It's important to look beyond the rhetoric right. and try to understand the potential impact of each candidate's proposals. Speaking of potential impact, healthcare seems to be Absolutely. a major point of contention. And it's not just about women's reproductive health. Okay. Harris is focusing heavily on the affordability of healthcare. Right. Promising to lower costs for families and individuals. She's really pushing the idea that healthcare should be a right, not a privilege. Exactly. She's advocating for a system where everyone has access right. to quality, affordable healthcare. Okay. Regardless of their income or employment status. Ah. And she's contrasting her vision right. with what she characterizes as her opponent's attempts to dismantle the sure. Affordable Care Act and make health care less accessible. So it's a fundamental difference in philosophy. Precisely. About the role of government in providing health care. And it's a debate that's been raging for decades. Yeah. Harris is positioning herself as the one who will fight yeah. for universal health care while her opponent is portrayed as being more aligned right. with a free market approach, one that prioritizes oh. individual choice and competition. It seems like there's also a lot of talk about the environment and climate change. Yes, that's another key issue that's emerging in these sources. Right. Harris is emphasizing her commitment to addressing climate change. Yeah. Promising to invest in renewable energy. Okay. And to take bold action to reduce carbon emissions. She's even proposing a plan. Wow. To achieve net zero emissions by a specific date. 
And she's contrasting her approach with her opponent's skepticism. Exactly. About climate change. She's painting a picture of a future okay. where we're taking aggressive action right. to address climate change versus one where we're ignoring the science <laughs> and continuing down a path of environmental destruction. So it's another example of this stark contrast strategy. Precisely. That we've been seeing throughout these sources. They're trying to make this election about a choice. Right, between two very different visions for the future. Mm -hmm. And they're using every tool at their disposal yeah. to highlight those differences. This brings up an interesting point for you to consider. Okay. How do you sort through these conflicting claims and promises? Mm -hmm. What criteria do you use to evaluate the credibility yeah. of each candidate's proposals? Right. Do you focus on their track record, yeah. their policy specifics, their overall vision? It's a challenging task and there's no easy answer. Yeah. But it's essential to be a critical thinker. Right. To question your assumptions and yeah. to seek out information yeah. from a variety of sources. Don't just rely on right. what you hear from the campaign styles. Okay. Look to independent fact checkers, policy analysts, huh. and news organizations that you trust yeah. to provide objective analysis. It seems like there's also a lot of discussion about the Supreme Court. That's a crucial issue. And the potential for future appointments. Yep. That's often overlooked in election coverage. Yeah. The makeup of the Supreme Court has a profound impact on our lives. Right. From reproductive rights to voting rights to environmental regulations. And Harris is making it clear that she would appoint justices. Absolutely. Who would uphold Roe v. Wade. She's emphasizing her commitment to protecting reproductive rights. Right. And she's directly contrasting her approach with her opponents, uh -huh. who has stated that he would appoint justices who would overturn Roe. So it's another example of this election being about a choice. Precisely. Between two very different visions for the future. And it's a reminder that the stakes are high, not just for the next four years, yeah. but for generations to come. Right. The decisions made by the Supreme Court okay. have long-lasting consequences. Right. And the justices appointed by the next president yeah. will likely shape the legal landscape for decades. It's a sobering thought. It makes you wonder about the long-term implications yeah. of this election. What kind of country do we want to live in? What values do we want to uphold? It's a good question. These are big questions that go beyond yeah. just the immediate policy debates. You're right. It's not just about who sits in the Oval Office yeah. for the next four years. It's about the direction of our country, Yeah. the kind of society we want to build, right. and the legacy we want to leave yeah. for future generations. It seems like there's also a lot of talk about immigration and border security. Yes. That's another hot-button issue. Okay. It's generating a lot of heat in these sources. Right. Harris is advocating for a more humane and compassionate approach okay. to immigration, while her opponent is focusing on strengthening border security right. and restricting immigration, particularly from certain countries. It's interesting how they're framing the issue yeah. in very different ways Harris is talking about. Right. The contributions of immigrants and the need to create yeah. a pathway to citizenship while her opponent is painting a picture of a border crisis and a threat to national security. Exactly. They're appealing to very different emotions and values. Right. Harris is appealing to empathy, compassion, okay, and a sense of fairness, yeah. while her opponent is appealing to fear, anxiety, right. and a desire for security. It makes you wonder how effective those different approaches are with voters. That's a key question yeah. for you to consider as you evaluate these sources. Okay. Which message resonates more with you? Right. Which approach do you find more persuasive? Uh -huh. It's important to be aware of the emotional appeals yeah. being used by each campaign and to evaluate them critically. Yeah, she reminds us that women are not the only ones who have had their bodily autonomy violated. Right. Drawing parallels to the forced sterilization of people of color. Right. And the medical experimentation on marginalized communities. It's a powerful way of framing the issue, yeah. showing how the fight for reproductive justice is part of a right. larger struggle for human dignity and self-determination. Exactly. She's arguing that bodily autonomy is a fundamental human right yeah. that applies to everyone, right. regardless of their gender, race, or background. And it's not just about protecting ourselves from government intrusion. Right. She also challenges us to consider the ways yeah. in which we might be complicit in systems mm -hmm. that violate bodily autonomy. It's a call to examine our own beliefs and behaviors. Right. Are we challenging rape culture? Are we yeah. confronting transphobia? Yeah. 
are we speaking out against any form of violence or coercion right. that violates another person's bodily integrity? It's about being an active ally. Yeah. Using our voices and actions to create a world uh. where everyone feels safe and respected in their own bodies. And it's about recognizing that the fight for bodily autonomy yeah. is interconnected with other social justice movements. Mm. We can't achieve true liberation for anyone yeah. until we respect everyone's right to make choices about their own bodies. It's a powerful and challenging message. Yeah. It makes you think about the ways in which we can all be mm -hmm. more mindful of respecting bodily autonomy, both in our personal yeah. interactions and in our support for policies Absolutely. that protect this fundamental right. And it's a reminder that the fight for social justice is an ongoing process right. that requires constant vigilance and action. One final thread I wanted to pull on is this idea of okay. trust and respect in healthcare. Yeah. Which Michelle Obama brings up quite a bit. It's a crucial aspect of the healthcare conversation that often gets overlooked. Yeah. She's not just talking about access to services, she's talking about the importance of building trusting relationships okay. between patients and providers. She really emphasizes the importance of listening to women's experiences, exactly. believing their pain, right. and respecting their choices. She's advocating for a healthcare system where women feel empowered okay. to advocate for their own needs uh -huh. and make informed decisions about their own bodies. And that goes beyond just reproductive health. Right. It's about creating a healthcare system yeah. that is truly patient centered. Mm -hmm where everyone feels heard, respected, Absolutely. and empowered to participate in their own care. Right. She's challenging the traditional power dynamics in healthcare, mm. where the doctor is seen as the ultimate authority, right. and the patient is expected to passively comply. She's urging us to be active participants in our own care. Exactly. To ask questions, to challenge assumptions. Yeah. And to advocate for our own needs. And she's calling on healthcare providers to listen more deeply. Right. To believe their patients and to respect their autonomy. This is a powerful vision for a more equitable and just healthcare system. It is. It makes you think about your own experiences with healthcare. Yeah. Have you felt heard and respected by your providers? Mm -hmm. Have you felt empowered to participate in your own care? It's a valuable exercise to reflect on those experiences yeah. and to consider how we can all contribute to creating a more right, trusting and respectful healthcare system. So after this deep dive into the heart of Kamala Harris's campaign, yeah. what can we say about the energy and the message? There's definitely a sense of urgency and awareness right. that this election is about more than just choosing a president. Mm -hmm. It's about defining our values, defending our rights, right. and shaping the kind of future we want to live in. And while they're trying to project a sense of here, Absur recognition that the stakes are incredibly high. They're walking a tightrope, trying to energize their base. Yeah. Without alienating moderate voters, mm. it'll be interesting to see right. how effective this balancing act proves to be right. as we get closer to Election Day. One thing's for sure, they're leaving no stone unturned yeah. in their efforts to connect with voters on an emotional level. And it's up to each of us to decide which message resonates most deeply, Right. which vision for the future we want to embrace. This deep dive has given you a lot to think about. It has. But remember, this is just one perspective right. on a complex and multifaceted issue. It's important to seek out absolutely diverse viewpoints, to do your own research, yeah. and to form your own conclusions based on the information you gather. Ultimately, the most important question is not what we think, right. but what you think. Exactly. What are your values? What are your priorities? And how will you use your voice and your vote right. to shape the future?